Here's a meter from Fluke you may not encounter unless you start working on hybrid vehicles. And it's called a Fluke 1587. And the big feature that's different about it or special about it is the insulation test. It's for high voltage insulation. Now, let's go ahead and go through the things about this meter that are normal and comparable to other Fluke meters and then the things that are special in this high insulation test feature. First off, we'll go through the jacks on the bottom. Now, like any other fluke meter, we have the jack for volts and ohms and also for the thermal couple for measuring temperature. And then the common, or the ground, as we call it in the automotive world. And over here, you'd have a milliamp scale fused up to 440 milliamps. So we, in series, would hook the ammeter with a circuit and see how much current the circuit's drawing, provided you know it's just going to be a few hundred milliamps, not over that amount, and blow the internal fuse in the meter. Now, some special things about this meter, we start to see already with the jacks. There's a very unusual looking jack, and it's for insulation test. Now, some leads go into this jack that look like something you've never seen before on a meter. Now, one of the leads is very normal, and that's going to be just a regular push-in jack that you'll put over here where it says milliamps, but it also says the negative for insulation test. And that other, the other end of that lead could just be the normal CAT 3000 volt rated meter lead with an alligator clip or a probe or whatever. Now, the second lead that's got the three prongs is going to plug into the top portion of the insulation test, like that, and the corresponding end it has CAT 3000 volt rated, 10 amps, is a lead with a button on it. Now the button pressed here is the same function as the button that's marked insulation test here. And basically what this does that no other meter out there does in the fluke lineup, it checks the insulation not only of uh, any wiring that you would have in the shop, you know, the 110, 220, but also checks mm -hmm. insulation, those orange cables on hybrid vehicles. Now, it's, it's not like a spark plug wire that you can take a little salt water mist in a, in a spray bottle and spray up the ignition system and then put the thing in drive and torque it up and see if the plug wires leak. See that little arc show that goes on when you have leaky insulation on plug wires. That's a visual thing. When a hybrid vehicle has a leaky cable, a leaky orange high voltage cable, those orange cables you don't touch without the class zero gloves and a category three thousand volt meters. When one of those leads starts getting breaking down, either because it's been damaged, the insulation's been violated, or it just gotten old and started leaking, is you'll have a code that'll be set and the system will shut down. I like to refer to it as a very tech, tech version of a GFI, ground fault interrupter. When that happens on anything except maybe a Saturn View, Malibu, one of those belt alternator starter hybrids, or a Honda with a backup 12 volt starter. When that hybrid system goes down on most full hybrids, you're walking. It's going to be a wrecker uh, towing the car in. You're going to have a, a code that says high voltage cable insulation leak, something to that effect. And it'll be your job to find out which one of those orange cables is leaking and where. And this is going to be the tool you're going to use to do that. Now, if I unplug these leads and so we get back to the basic side of this meter and continue on with our little progression of how it works. It works like any other meter. If we take the rotary button, the rotary knob, and we turn it to volts of AC, that little sine wave symbol there, we see it has a secondary function. And like all the other meters, we have a shift key or alternate key, whatever you want to call it. In this case, it's a blue button. If you hold the blue button down while you're in AC volts, measuring some AC voltage, now it's going to have a little symbol come up right here and that is the low pass filter. Now, that's another little hybrid thing possibly you may be seeing out there in the future. What they'd say, what Fluke says with this low pass filter is anything over 800 hertz, it will filter those kind of transients out so you can see a good reading with your AC multimeter. Now, where would you see those kind of frequencies? Well, uh, high frequency switched motors, drive motors like you would see in hybrids, 
Uh, I think the, 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 the Toyotas are maybe in Lexus is around five kilohertz of switching on the AC motors, the induction motors that actually propel the vehicle. Um, inverters. Inverters take DC and turn it into AC, so you're going to have some, some transients in that process. This will smooth that out when you're in this mode, when you hit the blue button while you're in AC volts and you have what's called the low pass filter, so we see a, a smoother signal when we're measuring that AC voltage. So that's that function. And DC is pretty much self-explanatory. No other functions here, just good old-fashioned DC. We turn it to millivolts. And we have a function, we hit the alternate or the, uh, uh, the shift key, the blue key, and we turn it to Celsius in degrees of temperature. So we'll be using our thermal couple uh, to measure temperature with that. If you want to see it in Fahrenheit, you would hit the, the range button, and it goes from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So as we turn it to ohms, it's either ohms or capacitance. We hit the blue button again, the shift key, now it says nanofarads, and keep turning clockwise, there's our continuity test. Typically anything under 25 ohms will trigger the continuity, you'll get the beep sound, and if it goes above 100 ohms, then the beep sound will go away. So that's just a low-tech version of checking the resistance, uh, just a real quick listening to the beep. And it also turns into diode test if we hit the blue shift key, and now we're measuring the diode uh, voltage drop across diodes, see if the diode's good. And turn it to milliamps, and in the default mode, since this is a high, ins high voltage insulation tester, suitable for hybrid vehicles, if defaults to being an AC amperage, you want to look at DC amperage in the blue, hit the shift key, we're at DC amperage. And then finally, where we actually run this high voltage test for the insulation, it says the leads are unplugged, and then it'll come back and say the resistance of the circuit we're testing. If we plug these in, and then we actually push the button, we're going to see not just a half a volt or two volts of juice come out of this meter. The meter is actually going to make 200, 500, 1,000 volts go into that circuit of those orange cables and check to see if any of that insulation is breaking down under high voltage. So in that regard, it is kind of like putting an engine into a load and, and checking to see if the spark plug wires are leaking. We're doing a, a loaded circuit test, low current, but a higher voltage. In some cases, it's called a mega or mega ohm meter because it measures higher resistances than a normal ohm meter to see if that high voltage orange cable, in the case of the hybrid vehicle, insulation is leaking. Okay. On buttons, a little different than the Fluke 88.5 series is you're not going to have this backlight button go from bright to dim. This is going to be off or on with a backlight, very simple. We've talked about the insulation test button already, and of course this is our function or shift key. Uh, the hold button, like the other meters, is going to freeze whatever's on the screen. Now, if you're already in the min-max mode, this is going to freeze it. If you're in a recording mode or you're in a normal live mode and you hit that hold button, it's going to hold it, but then it's going to beep and display the next higher level once it achieves a different uh, reading on the meter. Now, if you're in insulation mode, like actually we are at the moment, and you hold that down, it's, I guess it's kind of the equivalent if you had a, a drill and you had that button that would hold the trigger on. So if you're doing an insulation test and you push this down, the next time, I should say, when you put, push the hold button in insulation test mode and then you push the test mode down, it's going to keep the test active until you press the button again. So instead of being more of a momentary type of a switch, when you press the hold button, it's going to stick it on and keep it on until you either push the button a second time or release the hold. Minimum and maximum, that's going to be for looking at, uh, if we turn it back to say ohms, we're looking for, let's say, looking at a TPS or something like that, we're looking for min and max, just we're recording here, the minimum, maximum of the range, you can, it, uh, the signal, whatever it's seeing, and then you can play back and see what the average is and so forth. And then the same thing, you turn it to volts, the same thing with other Fluke products, you hit the hertz button, and we've got times per second, you hit it again, it goes back to DC, so it doesn't give you the duty cycle function. So not as quite as many automotive functions as the Fluke 88, 
but it still can read frequency. And of course the range, we can go from auto range to manual range. So we're in auto ranging by default, we'll go to, go to manual range and back to auto and so forth. So by default, we'll be in auto, turn the backlight back on, and then we can go to manual by hitting the range button and change our ranges of whatever we're, whatever is more appropriate for what we're looking at. Now, let's talk about some advanced buttons as far as what you hold down as you turn the rotary knob on to get into some kind of hidden features. So we'll turn the rotary knob off. Let's hold the hold button down as we rotate the rotary knob to the first position, volts AC. And we have a segment check. So every single LCD segment on the display is lit up to make sure everything's working. If you're curious what all's there, and you don't want to get the manual out, that's one way to do it. Turn the knob one more notch to DC volts, and there's the software revision of this Fluke 1587. And speaking of Fluke 1587, turn it one more notch to millivolts DC, and there's the model number of the meter you're working with, Fluke 1587. Any other position goes into the segment check. Now, let's turn the meter back off and try another button hold down during power up. Let's go ahead and push the range button. Here's the range button and rotate the knob on and it goes into S which means smoothing mode. So if we're looking at voltage and it's got some transients and some things changing back and forth, you want to smooth that out and see a more consistent, stable signal on your voltmeter. That's what you want to get into is smoothing mode. And if you want to turn it back off and go back down to the blue button, if you want to keep the meter from doing auto shutdown or auto power down, push the, push the blue button and turn the meter on and it says P for power down. The power down feature is turned off. And then finally, if you did have the ability to calibrate the meters, holding the backlight button down and turning the meter on says it's in calibration mode. Something you're not gonna be doing. But be aware, that same movement holding the backlight button down and turning the meter on, on the Fluke 1587 puts it in calibration mode. On the Fluke 88.5 series, it puts it into auto ranging mode, one of two ways to do it on the Fluke 88.5 series. So that's a little overview of how a Fluke 1587 high voltage insulation tester does its job.